السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We love you so much that we had to come back again and meet you ما شاء الله تبارك الله ما شاء الله do I say my beloved children or do I say my brothers and sisters? Which one do you prefer? MashaAllah. I think let's say brothers and sisters because as you grow older, inshallah, you will appreciate it and you will be able to one day perhaps let your children watch the day when you were at this beautiful torchbearers event in Dubai. May Allah Almighty accept it from you, from us, from all the organizers and everyone who made this happen. Amin. Do you know and do you realize the reason why we hold these events? It is because we are concerned about you and about the betterment of the entire globe. We have so many categories of people. One of them is the youth. And from among the youth, there are those who go to colleges, those who go to schools. It's important for us to connect, to connect with the idea of helping you focus. There are so many distractions on earth today. So many things are happening that are not good for you. And there are a lot of things that are happening that may be good for you that you might not notice. And sometimes you need to be directed and pushed in that direction. If you look at those who've succeeded on earth, you will always find that they've had qualities that are worth looking at. One of the main qualities that I always tell people is to be active and fight laziness. If you're lazy, you're not going to succeed. If you look at the guidance that Allah Almighty has given us in the Quran, and why do we have to quote the Quran? The reason is, that is the word of the maker, Allah. So we will always quote his word because it is the yardstick. It is the guiding light. It is something that the one who made me has given to me in order to know why he made me. So I will always look at the Quran. Sometimes you have young people saying, why do you have to quote the Quran? I've had people ask me that. It's a good question. Well, the reason is the one who made me, it's his word. I need to know why he made me. I always tell people, you are on earth, not because you wanted to be here, because Allah Almighty put you here. None of us have chosen to come on earth. You look at the earth and you find parts of the globe are so depressing. And some of what's going on is so sad that people say, I wish I wasn't even here. You can keep wishing you are here. So you're going to have to deal with it. You're going to have to live with it. You're going to have to do your best while you are here. Allah Almighty gives us stories in the Quran and every story he tells us, there are definitely lessons for us in those stories. Allah says towards the end of Surah Yusuf, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبَرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, in the stories of the messengers, in the stories, in their stories, there are lessons for those with sound intellect. I'd like to hope that you guys are intelligent. When we were little, technology was not where it is today. Today we're sitting, I have a phone in front of me, a little laptop in front of me. I have so much of technology. I have a timer there. I have a little uh, indicator on this side. All this is technology. Back in the day when we were little, there was nothing like this. The headmaster used to get up and yell at us and that's it. And he, they, at, the, at that time, they actually used to beat people up. You know, you guys are lucky. There's no more beating up. When we were small, we used to be whacked, right? I'm sure your fathers and grandfathers might tell you. And slowly but surely, the world moved in a direction to protect the child, which was a good thing to say, we choose more effective yet more appropriate methods of discipline. Imagine if I were to discipline you and tell you, listen, you've been misbehaving. Give me your phone for one week. Will you give it to me? Don't lie. Don't lie. No way. No lying allowed. If you will give me your phone for one week as a punishment for something you did that was bad, put up your hand. 
Okay, there are a few hands. Okay, a few hands. Maybe you guys are not that well connected. Put your hands down, right? Mashallah. But don't you agree with me that if we were lazy, we wouldn't be here this morning. We wouldn't be here. If we were lazy, we wouldn't be here because you had to get up early. You go to school early every day. You had to make an effort and you had to come all the way and you had to be seated. And it's not easy to come earlier than others because then you have to wait. You have to wait a few hours at times. I was here very early. I waited for about one and a half hours. Do you know that? Subhanallah. But if people are lazy, they don't achieve. So I want you to promise Promise yourself and promise Allah that you're going to fight laziness. You see, we have five daily prayers. If you look at the timing of these prayers, you will come to realize that Allah Almighty has kept one before the sun rises because he wants you to rise before the sun so that you can shine brighter than the sun. How's that one? Allah wants you to rise before the sun rises. Subhanallah. He wants you to be brighter than the sun, mashallah. So those of us who rise early and we get up before the sunrise and we turn to the one who made us and we pray, it doesn't take long. I was thinking the other day when I'm sitting on my prayer mat early in the morning and I'm thinking, look at how merciful my Lord is. He's actually just given me a duty of the shortest, smallest prayer to be at this time. Imagine if it was a long prayer. What if we had Salatul Fajr with 10 units, you know, 10 raka'at? It would be difficult. You're going to start and you're going to think to yourself, I still got another nine to go, right? But Allah says, no, it's just two units. And add another two units before it, which is very valuable. Very valuable. So two units and another two units. How long does it take? Wallahi, I tell you, it doesn't take more than between five to 10 minutes, not more than that. And what does Allah want from you? He wants you primarily to get up. That's what he wants you to do. And he wants you to pray to him. He wants you to get up in order that you can fight your laziness. He knows that if you are early, you will be not only successful, but you're healthy as well. Early to bed, early to rise. What does he do to you? It makes you what? Healthy, wealthy, and wise. So one old man comes to me, he says, I've got up early every day, but I didn't ever, I didn't ever earn enough money. I said, you know what? Maybe you were lazy because sometimes you go to sleep thereafter. People say, I got up very early, but they don't say, I slept away after that. Well, I've done it a few times where you get up for Salatul Fajr, you're all excited, and after Fajr, you hit the sack. And sometimes you get a better snooze than you did all night, right? It does happen. It's not prohibited, but... Weekdays, you need to make sure when there's something to be done, try your best not to go to bed after Salatul Fajr. Especially in a beautiful country like this where the timings are not so awkward. If any one of you is from the UK or from Europe or from the North Pole or the Northern Hemisphere close up to the North Pole, you would know that the timings are so weird sometimes. They have Salatul Fajr at times at 8.30 in the morning. Have you ever been to a country where Salatul Fajr is at 8.30 in the morning? I have. And a country where Salatul Fajr sometimes is at 1.30 at night. Come on, subhanallah. So sometimes you get up to go to school and you have not yet made Fajr because it's not yet the time of Fajr. And sometimes you get up and you, you have to do your Fajr and sleep after that because it's still a long time before your day starts. So thank Allah you're living in a situation that is relatively balanced. So you get up early in the morning. These five prayers are so amazing. Allah wants you to discipline yourself. Allah wants you as a young person and even the older ones. But it starts off at a young age when salah or the prayer becomes compulsory on you. Allah wants you to get up and make an effort because He wants you to train yourself. He wants you to worship Him to start with a few minutes. And then you are conscious of Him throughout the day. Let me tell you, when you go to school, don't you have some kids? Their upbringing shows clearly that in their house, people swear a lot. How do I know that? Because they swear. They come and say some ugly words. 
Imagine kids who've never heard a swear word because their parents and those whom they live with are disciplined and conscious of the fact that if we say something, the kids are going to pick it up. And then there are other kids they interact with who are the opposite. And when they meet, these are hearing those and thinking, gosh, I've never heard those words before. And then what happens? If you get used to it, you go home and one day you start swearing. And your mother or father says, where did you get that from? I didn't teach that to you. Right? So we need to make sure we're Muslim. We believe in Allah. We're good people. Allah wants us to be disciplined. Control your tongue. The first words when you got up were words of praise of Allah. Do you know when your eye opens as you get up from your sleep, you're supposed to say Alhamdulillah. All praise is due to Allah. Alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhin nushur. One of the dua or supplications that you and I are taught when you first get up is to thank Allah that you actually got up after you were semi-dead. What's the meaning of semi-dead? You're fast asleep, fast asleep. Some people don't even know, they don't realize what's around them when they're asleep. Some people sleep to the degree that you can do whatever you want and they won't know. And others are light sleepers, right? Light sleepers, as soon as you just come near them and say, <coughs> they quickly get up, what's going on, you know? But Allah wants you to say, Alhamdulillah, as the first words, thank Him that I'm back, I'm up, mashallah. And I thank Allah and we're all going to go back to Allah. You started your day that way. So I'm going to be conscious of Allah for the rest of that particular day and every day that follows. Look, if you want to solve the problems that you notice while you're living on earth, one of the qualities you're going to have to have is discipline. You need to control yourself on earth. I cannot do everything I want. I need to make sure I do what is good. And what is good? What Allah has told you is good is good. So you control the way you speak. You are young. You need to hold yourself. You need to discipline yourself. Restrain yourself. You want to swear? Don't swear. You know the swear words. I know so many swear words. Trust me, I probably know more, what can I say? More illustrious swear words than you. I swear. I probably know swear words that are so terrible that you wouldn't even know the meaning of, right? Probably, who knows? Or do you think you guys know bigger swear words than mine? You see, the boys are saying yes. The girls are all like just quiet looking at what did you just say? Who knows bigger swear words, the boys or the girls? <laughs> la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Okay, let me tell you why I'm saying this. Why I'm asking this is because it's not about how many swear words you know. It's about how much you're going to restrain yourself never to use words that are hurtful, abusive or insulting at all because you're a believer. Allah is going to ask you about what you've said and you're, you know, Using the worst words against people you go to school with, against people you interact with, against people whom you, you are supposed to be looking out for. So it's really something Allah teaches us to abstain from by practicing restraint. If you're not going to restrain yourself, how can you succeed in life? There are so many things I want to do that sometimes I know, you know what, it's okay. This will displease Allah, so I'm not going to do it. And if you fall in it, you quickly come out and you quickly say to Allah Almighty, Oh Allah, I made a mistake. I'm a human. What I did was wrong. I had this moment of anger. I said a bad word. I did a bad thing. And forgive me. I'm not going to do that again. And Allah forgives you. So every one of us needs to make sure, Wallahi, that we use good words. We say good words. We stay away from that which is hurtful, insulting and abusive. If you are in your school environment and you grow up with all these words, you say whatever you want and you think you're a big deal, you hurt people, you're not going to achieve holistic success as you grow older. You're going to be interacting with a crowd that's similar to you. And if you're interacting with a crowd that's similar to you in, in bad ways and habits, then the chances of you succeeding have been minimized. 
So we have a day like this in order to remind yourselves and myself to say, listen, you need to control yourself. You need to be disciplined. You need to practice self-restraint. And you need to make sure you take people in. You know, when we see hurtful things happening within our community to people, we should be hurt. If you see someone homeless, you should feel it. If you see someone being attacked, you should feel it. And what do you do about it? You need to do something positive. You need to do something good. The first thing you should do is to pray to Allah. Pray to Allah for them. That's the first thing you do. And you need to make sure that the harm that they're in is not coming from you. Because if you're the one harming them, how are you going to be praying for them? You won't pray for them. So I'm not going to harm people and people who are harmed, I'm going to pray for them to start with and then I'm going to help them. I'm going to help them to try and see how best they can be saved, secured and so on. This is why Islam gives the importance to the homeless, the people who don't have a home, the people who are destitute, the people who are poor. Do you know that if Allah wanted, he did not need rich people to give to the poor people. He didn't need that. He could do it on his own. He's the one who made the rich rich. He could do it on his own. Allah feeds every insect and every bird and every fish. Allah feeds them. Allah gives them, provides for them. Do you think that Allah needs you and I to give the poor? Actually, he doesn't need us, but he's giving us an opportunity to see the condition of our hearts. To be able to prove to him that, oh Allah, I care, I will, I have something they don't have, I'm going to share it. These qualities, wallahi, we need them. In the world, we are lacking these qualities. We're becoming selfish. It's all about me. The age of social media, if I have, I want, it's me. I need to be, I need to be. No, let's change the narrative to we need to be. And it's all about us. Subhanallah, if we do change that narrative and make it about us, you make the world a better place. Because whatever you have in terms of goodness, you're going to share it. Imagine Allah Almighty tells you, I'm going to give you such a good job with such a good salary. I will give you a brain. I will give you the ability. I will give you the energy. I will give you the acceptance to be in the right place at the right time. And then to be able to do such a deal that you earned one billion, right? You earned one billion. And now that you've earned one billion, Allah is watching you. Because as you walk out and you've just got your billion around and you, or wherever it might be in your account or wherever it is. And suddenly you notice a few people who are struggling. They, they're scavenging in the bin. People do scavenge in the bin. They're looking into the bin and trying to find leftovers from people's food in order to survive. And you're sitting there. And subhanallah, or you're passing by and you realize, do you know what? Allah's given me so much. What are you going to do? Allah says, we will provide for those people without you anyway. But if you are going to show an interest in them, it's a bonus. It is a connection with us. You realize the one who made them made me. I could have been in those shoes and who knows? It might happen that I might lose my billions. I know people who were billionaires who lost their billions. I'm sure you guys know a few too. Some people lost from so many billion to so many billion, they lost a large figure, but they weren't poor and others became bankrupt after they had so much. May Allah protect us. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him tells us if you would like more, more from Allah, learn to spend. If you spend, Allah will spend on you. Anfiq yabna adama unfiq alayk. Hadith Qudsi. You know the meaning of Hadith Qudsi? What is a hadith Qudsi? It's a hadith where? Hadith Qudsi is what? Where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is telling you what Allah said. That's hadith Qudsi. So Allah Almighty said this. What did he say? He says, O son of Adam, addressing all of us, O human beings, right? O son of Adam, spend, O son of Adam, and I will spend on you. So you want Allah to give you, you need to give others you need to give others amazing 
وَمَنْ قُدِرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقُهُ فَلْيُنْفِقْ مِمَّا آتَاهُ اللَّهِ Allah Almighty says, whoever's wealth is narrow or less, they should spend from what Allah gave them. This verse has deep meaning, vast meaning. It also would lead us to understand that we need to adjust our lives based on how much money we have. A lot of people don't do that. You see, I have a mobile phone. Do you know the make of this phone? What's the make of this phone? Anyone? The make of the phone has become such a big deal that we go to war over Apple or Android. Am I right? We go to war. I just heard the boy screaming. I don't even know what you were saying, but some people were yelling this and some were yelling that. Subhanallah. The make of the phone has become such a big issue because the brand, the brand. But I tell you something, one who has neither Apple nor Android, they have, or, or no Samsung, they have a third phone or something that you'd never heard about for as long as it's working and it's fulfilling the functions they need. Isn't it a good thing? Do you really have to have a specific brand and a specific name? Well, if I can afford it easily, then yes. But otherwise, I don't need it. And it's not going to be my main focus on earth. Allah tells me, adjust your life based on how much you have. If you're not going to do that, you're going to struggle. So some people drive maybe a Bentley and others drive a Toyota like myself, right? Did you see the video we did where I was in an Uber? Can I tell you what? It's okay, you can drive whatever car you want. It's okay. For as long as I got from point A to point B. If you could afford a very expensive car, Alhamdulillah, thank Allah, for as long as it does not make you proud and arrogant, and for as long as you don't belittle other people just because you have been given something, inshallah, you're heading in the right direction. When you come from a wealthy home, be humble, greet everyone, talk to them nicely, because now that's your test. When you come from a poorer home, remember, thank Allah for what you have. Thank Allah and don't look at something and wish for something you don't have. It's human to wish for a few things, but not every single thing. And when you say, inshallah, one day I'll get this. You don't say it with a, hurt, with a heart that is hurt and in pain. No, it's not in pain. I'm just saying, inshallah, Allah will give me too. I'm happy with what I have right now. Subhanallah. To look at what Allah's given you and thank Allah for it is an act of worship. It starts off from a young age, young age. That's why we are here to tell you about it, to tell you about it. Wallahi, one of the most important things you could ever have is contentment, Be, being happy. Not everyone comes from a wealthy home. Not everyone is going to get a job that's going to give them millions. You'll get something inshallah. Allah will provide for you. And when you have, share it with others. Give others. So I was telling you this verse helps us to understand that each one of us should spend according to our level. But it also helps us understand that when you are in need, look at those who are in a bigger need and spend on them. Spend at them. And Allah Almighty will bless you. I tell you, another quality we need as young people growing up, we need to be trustworthy you need to be truthful look at the prophet muhammad peace be upon him when he was young he didn't lie he told the truth he was upright he was honest and trustworthy they used to call him a sadiq al amin he was young wallahi young boy growing up young boy just like you and i well younger than me but what i mean is the people i'm talking to here today the youth a young person as he grew older they knew, knew him as a sadiq al amin would anyone know you as a sadiq al amin or do people know this guy's a liar don't even go there do you get what i'm saying do people know you as a truthful person if they know you as a truthful person upright person congratulations you've achieved a lot 
for your friends to say that this person is really a truthful and honest and upright, congrats. Wallahi, we are proud of you. We need more people like this. But the sad reality is in our lives, many people are not known as truthful and honest. In fact, they're known with negative descriptions. People are known with negative descriptions. It's so sad. You need to change that because I want to succeed. Wallahi, we want to see you succeed. To have made an effort to have this type of a conference on a day like this, to call everyone and to bring them in is only because we'd like to see a positive change in your life. And we want to see you grow in a way that you are such an amazing human being. Your family, you've contributed towards. Your society, your community, your neighborhood, your school. Your city, your country, the ummah, the whole world, you contribute. There are people who have grown just like you have from the same schools who've left a positive mark on the globe because they served the globe in one way or another. There are people just like you who grew older with beautiful qualities and they actually achieved so much. I promise you, if you work hard, you can achieve even more. And this is why when I get young people coming and saying, you know what? You might have heard this in some, some clips, perhaps. Young people come and say, I'd like to be like you when I grow up. Make dua for me, which means pray for me. Or sometimes the parents come and say, pray that my son is like you. And I tell them, no, not like me, better than me. Don't aim here. This is too low. It's too low. Aim higher. I tell someone says, I want to be like you. Say, no, not like me, better than me. Why like me? May Allah Almighty grant you guys such success that is way beyond anything you have seen in your life. Just say, Amin. Wallahi, we want it for you. And we want to see it for you. But without honesty, without working hard, without that connection with Allah. Like I said, you start your day, say a prayer. Come on. You cannot be a person who wants to succeed and you haven't yet recognized your maker. Who made you? Who put you here by force? Who, who put you here without you having had a say in it? Have a small connection. It's supposed to be the biggest connection, but you start off with something small and inshallah, let it grow. With your maker. I, I cannot compromise my five daily prayers. I can't. Because why? I want to succeed. Oh, but it's hard. So what? Oh, but it's tough. So what? Oh, it's a cold day. It's hard to wash. So what? Oh, I've got all makeup on. So what? Subhanallah. Oh, you know what? We're all playing games. So what? You will pray by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you need to develop that connection with Allah. We're going to go back to him. So many have already gone back. We're all going to go back. We look forward to the day we go back to Allah because we tried hard. And in the interim, I'm going to work. I'm going to earn. I'm going to perhaps at school. When was your last exams? Your last examination? When was it? Right now, recently? Okay. How was the examination? Was it tough? You know, it's crazy because from this side, I hear them say it's tough. And this side seems like they just sailed straight through it. Right? The boys are always complaining because you know what? Probably you guys are a little bit too much into your games, a little bit too much into a few other things. So you're distracted. Does it sound right? Yes, it sounds right. Mashallah. Mashallah. I see a few guys there. Mashallah. May Allah Almighty grant you success. But the examinations are such that if you don't work for them, you're not going to achieve. You need to work. You cannot just chill and go and do your socializing to say the least or whatever your games and then expect to get to have flying colors you need to work hard you need to get up you need to study you need to maybe develop a study circle when i was young i had a few friends we used to sit together and study it helped me more than when i studied alone if i was alone yes it was okay but when i was with one or two guys and we talked about it and spoke and exchanged notes and asked each other questions wallahi we became masters at the subject because we were like testing each other already and that's how it works so you use your mechanism, but that's how you're going to pass. If you do not work hard, if you do not work hard and you fail, you have none other to blame than yourself. 
The same applies when I return back to my maker one day, I need to look forward to the trip because I have no option. I have to go back to him in the same way that I had to come here. And when I go back to him, inshallah, I will be so happy to see my maker because I've prepared. I did a lot of good things while I was here. I prayed and I tried my best. I know what needs to be done as a Muslim. I know what needs to be done slowly, but surely inshallah, I'm going to get there. As I grow older, I develop a better, better connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The world is going through a lot. So much of turbulence, so much happening, weather patterns, disasters, be they natural, man-made, whatever it is. Wallahi, we need to make sure that we're living our life such that we're an asset. We're an asset to the whole world. And it starts at this age where work hard, build your character, speak well to people, discipline, pra practice self-restraint, like I said, and make sure that you don't just hurt people and you're not a negative force. Like I said, you go back to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was known as a Sadiq Al-Amin. Go back to Musa alayhi salam. When he was young, one day he saw some girls at a well and they were trying to they were waiting in order to get their sheep to drink some water from the well and he helped them when he helped them they went home and when they got home early the father asks them you guys are early today and they explained the story that there was a man strong guy who came and he helped us and you know what he had two qualities in him. So we want you to employ him. Why don't you employ him? What were the two qualities? There we are. They said, Ya abatista jirhu. Oh, our father, why don't you hire this man? Inna khayra man al amin. Because the best whom you could hire is the one who is strong, which means they're not lazy and they work hard. And Amin, Amin means one who's trustworthy. Those are the cornerstones of success at a workplace. You want to employ someone, look for those two qualities. You want to be employed, you have those two qualities, you will succeed. What are the two qualities? Hard working and honesty. If a person is very hard working but not honest, you don't get anything. And if a person is very honest, but they don't work hard, you don't get anything. You need these two qualities. Work hard and be upright and honest. And Allah will grant you every success. So that's Musa alayhi salam. We looked at the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. In that way, any story you read in the Quran, you'll always find these people were so upright. They were so amazing. Look at Yusuf. Yusuf alayhi salam, the handsome Nabi of Allah, the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he went through hardship, hardship upon hardship. Who were the people who planned his downfall? Do you know? Who were the people who planned his downfall? His brothers, his own brothers, they planned his downfall. But do you know, years later, when Allah raised him above all of those brothers, what did he do? Did he punch them up? Did he swear them? Did he abuse them? Did he insult them? Did he belittle them? No, he knew that Allah's given me. Allah's given me more than he's given all of them. So he said, look, you know what? I forgive you guys. It's okay. I'm not going to take any retribution today. Allah will forgive you. He is the most merciful of those who are merciful. That was Yusuf alayhi salam. So remember, these lessons we learn, they are in the Quran for us to look at. Young people as they grew up, they developed good habits. And I want to spend a moment talking about how to fight your bad habits. Because young people get used to smoking sometimes. Sometimes they want to go to waste their time in the wrong way. Sometimes on the phone, there are so many wrong things that you can do. And bad habits. You know what the bad habits are. Do you know what? If you're not going to practice self-restraint and hold yourself back, occupy yourself with something 
that is meaningful. Get in the company of good friends. Even if you just go out fishing or do some sport, some activity, go to the gym, whatever. Wallahi, if you're not going to do those things, your time will be wasted in that which is futile. So always remember, thank Allah for what he's given you. Work hard on your bad habits. Work hard. Understand them, recognize them. Look at yourself, how you talk to people, even amongst your friends. It's one of the most important things. Many people, as they grow older, they don't know how to talk to others. They don't respect people. They don't have any care for anyone but themselves. Are you courteous? Do you offer people? Do you have manners? You're a Muslim. You're supposed to be upright. Islam teaches you how to greet people. Not just that I'm supposed to say, Salaamu Alaikum. No. If you are younger, you should greet those who are older. If you are small in number, you greet those who are larger in number. If you are walking past, you greet those who are seated. All these rules are from Islam. This is only about the greeting. In a similar way, there are so many other rules and regulations and guidelines that Allah brings forth to us to make us amazing people. Amazing people. For us as Muslims, we are supposed to understand the blessings of Allah are very important. Sometimes people have a lot in life, but they're not blessed. They don't have the blessings. They don't have barakah. We call it barakah. If there is no barakah, you're not going to really succeed. But even if you have less in numbers and you have a lot of blessings, wallahi, Allah will make you a happy person. I'm so happy. I'm so content. And this is the way, inshallah, we will succeed. So, inshallah, I'm going to remain with you and we will give you an opportunity also to, to talk to us by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in the meantime, I will end my talk here uh, and inshallah, I'll be back shortly by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.